Butterscotch Shenanigans. Hey everybody, this is Sam from Butterscotch Shenanigans, and today we're going to walk through building yet another level. And this one was actually inspired. So I saw a gif of a sushi conveyor belt, and I thought, we could build a level out of that. We could build a level out of almost anything. Sometimes inspiration strikes from unlikely places, so today we're going to take the idea of a sushi conveyor belt and, well, try to build a little bit of a level out of it. So I'm starting with the package up there on some of those tow sliders, which are just treadmills. But you notice the package stops at some point. What I want the player to have to do is figure out how to get the package to keep on moving so that they can get it. This is a fun one. Again, this idea of having a dialogue with the player, letting them know that you see them, you're anticipating how they're thinking about things, and then you're here to have, make them have a really good time. So now I'm carving out a little bit of a room because, of course, we need to have some method to turn those treadmills on. I don't know what it's going to be yet, and that's just fine. So we're going to carve out a little space here for the player to work on so they're not banging their head against the treadmill all the time and put a batty eye switch in there. What a batty eye switch does is it watches for enemies in a certain area, and then it says, are enemies here? Well, in that case, I'm powered on. Are they not here? Well, then I'm off. And of course, you can invert that state with the switch logic and level head, but we're going to keep it as is so that we can make it so that these enemies essentially need to be dispatched of so that the player can turn those treadmills back on up there and get the package. I'm going to drop down and give it a fight and realize that I'm having the player drop down and kill themselves repeatedly. That's maybe not so fun, so put a little ledge there so they get that moment of warning. And whenever I'm doing a lot of switch-heavy stuff, you know, I like to leave the switches on. I'm no genius. It helps be able to see what the heck the switches are doing. Highly recommend it. Let me go ahead and build out some more of these treadmills, because I feel like maybe that section's good to go. At least for now. And who knows? Maybe we'll come back and revisit it later. And you'll see I add some of these large chunks of terrain to the level every so often. And really that's just to change up the visual aspect of it. You don't want a level that's just sort of a skeleton built to move the player through it. You want to make it a full-bodied level. You know, put some chunks of terrain here and there. Really try to spice it up. Now I'm laying down a, it's called a battery switch. What that does is it allows you to essentially have multiple batteries that are required to be put into it before it actually powers on. So you can think about a battery almost like a, like a piece of a key. And the player has to collect all of them and turn them in before it'll turn on. So lets you do really fun stuff like, you know, make Metroidvanias or just longer form puzzles that players have to return to. For some reason, you know, I thought that early section needed to be harder, so I put those guided missile cannons in there, just for fun. And now I'm getting this next section going, and I use secrets in this case, and not actually to make something secret, but just to make it so that the player can't quite tell what's going to happen before they get into it. And I like doing this sometimes because, you know, as designers, we're here to provide an emotional experience to the player as well as make them feel really good. So what I'm going to do is kind of make a secret area down there that is all about just kind of a drop-in effect. We'll see that in a little bit. And I'm testing out an idea. I thought, okay, this treadmill is going to bring this package over here. What if, what if I had a section where GR18, our little Android buddy, had to grab it through a wall of spikes? What would that look like? Kind of testing that out, getting the fan attached to this battery switch and make it so that maybe that's the sort of culmination of this whole puzzle. Maybe this is a short level. I don't know. All I know is that I wanted to make a sushi level. And that's what we're doing. Sometimes you just delete everything you did. Because you change your mind, you know? Level design is all about experiencing it. And really it's about inhabiting two bodies at once. Both yours as the designer and the players. And sometimes you can have a grand idea as a designer that's just frankly a terrible idea for the player. And you have to get really good at inhabiting both those bodies at the same time. So you can figure out what's actually fun. Some things are very fun to build and horrible to play through. Uh, keep an eye on that. So in this case, the player, I want to have them have to use a bomb in order to achieve a sort of a rocket jump effect to escape from this pit that I built. Not sure what's going to be in here yet, but I like this idea. Now I want them to have to leap off of a ledge. So a big part of this is achieving a feeling of change of pace in a level. You don't necessarily 
on a level that's all about really constricted movement inside of a small cave system and things like that. Or if you do, it's actually very nice to give the player a place where suddenly they can run and jump like a, you know, almost like one of those happy cows you see released into the, into the fields after a long winter. Let them just go get boisterous and, and leap around and stretch their legs a little bit. Get back down here, see if I can fight these enemies, feel this thing out. How's this going? Did I make it too hard by putting guided missiles in the corners? Yes, I did. Whoops, okay. Just back it up. Happy accident. No worries about it. it takes two seconds to fix. I'm putting a wall of fire here. It's one of my favorite techniques for making sure players don't go where they're not supposed to go yet. Sometimes you just gotta, frankly, burn them if they're getting a little too feisty with their, pro their progress. And now I got that drop down effect that I wanted. So finally the player will actually see that they can drop down, but they won't be able to see what's in there. And this is where things get fun, because we can surprise the player at least once. Of course, once they die and they know it's in there, well, it's not really a surprise anymore, but it's all about that first emotional impact sometimes. You only get one shot to surprise people. I'm thinking maybe this level's got a, you know, a little bit about dropping bombs. I guess I had this rocket jump thing in here. Why don't we use these bombs a little more? So I put down some of those bricks, and that'll require the player to actually get a bomb and then blow up the bricks. So you can think about bombs and bricks, again, almost like keys and locks to a door. There's a lot of elements in level design that work very similarly to that, where players have to do something in order to get something. It's like a key and a lock combo. Hunting down the key is a big part of the fun, and then of course unlocking it is its own reward. Fighting these guys a few times, playing it out. And again, try to inhabit both bodies simultaneously. Right now I'm a player, I'm not designing anything, I'm just feeling it out. Where does this feel good? Where would I enjoy this if this was a level that someone else gave to me to play? And where would I think it was broken? Now, in this case, I messed up the secrets down there, so the player actually can't see sometimes, so I've got to fix that next time. Go into the editor, but I want to finish this level, play throughout. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's see. Okay, now it works. And again, using that cheese mode, so I can just snap into any part of the level I want. And now we're going to add a camera in here. It's important to add a sense of cinematography to your levels, too, where sometimes the player's going to run into something, and you really want to make them pay attention to it. In this case, I want them to be absolutely terrified when they drop into this place for the first time. And grabbing the camera and changing it signifies that there's, there's a shift in pace happening here. So what I'm doing is getting these eye switches set up such that so long as the enemy's in here and the player's nearby, well, the camera's going to be turned on. What that means is that the camera's going to get locked onto that position. Which now, instead of following the player around, well, it's just watching that exact position. Makes it feel like a boss fight, right? And you can do quite a few things with those cameras. You can even put them on paths, which we'll do later on. So now I'm working on the switch logic, making sure everything's correct. Just that everything works. And then for some reason I just decided to, you know, give myself a power-up. Play through this level with a different power-up and see how it feels to just, frankly, be punching things all the time. Ignium Chassis is one of my favorites because you can punch. You can do an upward, sort of a diagonal dash with it. Of course, you can go really fast left and right. It allows the player to reach some high speeds and just kind of feel really cool. And also you can punch bricks. Who doesn't love that? Breaking stuff's kind of fun. I'm going to come in here and I decided I didn't really like the total level of fighting that happens in this level so far. So I'm going to put some of these blop flush in here. Now blop flush are frankly kind of dumb enemies. They just, you sort of typical flying rat situation. They just float around. Not super menacing, but you gotta be careful with them, because of course, they will kill you on impact. So I'm gonna make these complicated paths, and then I'm just gonna attach Blopfush to each one of these paths, make them run around, such that the player can't quite tell what the heck they're gonna do. It should provide just enough challenge. And then I'm thinking, starting with combat, maybe is not the right pace I want in here. Maybe I wanna have the player bust out of a sort of a small cell, almost like they got trapped here. Tell a little bit of a story and then have them escape. In this case, if you have a power-up like the Ignium Chassis, players are always going to want to punch things. So give them something to punch. In that case, that Vac Rat poses absolutely no challenge whatsoever, but it's very fun to punch. Sometimes you just got to put things in there for players to have a good time with that have literally no impact on the actual challenge of the level whatsoever. And again, using those backdrop tiles is one of my favorite things to symbolize to the player, hey, maybe you should look over here. Try this, try that. 
it's a good way to have a dialogue with the player that doesn't actually require any words whatsoever. And that's a big part of being a really good designer. It's all about speaking to the player without saying a word. So I'm feeling this area out and moving things forward, and I'm still st sticking with that sushi treadmill idea, but, you know, I'm kind of changing things up a little bit. Cheesing this part of the level to see if I can figure out exactly how this jump system is going to work. I want the player to have to work a little bit here to kind of get into the middle level, punch some blocks, make a new pathway for themselves, and then achieve another jump after that. And again, I know this is possible because, well, because I've been playing the level quite a bit. Playing the level is a really big part of designing it. So always keep that in mind. If you're ever stuck, you just hit that play button. Don't worry about it. The level will tell you what it wants. In this case, I want a little bit of a precision jump on the part of the player. So put some spikes there, you know? Just put them on edge the tiniest bit. But remember that it should always be the player's fault when they fail. If you as a designer are tricking them, it's only fun sometimes. Be really careful with that. Usually it'll just feel very cheap. But if the player can always say, oh, I just was overzealous with my jump, or oh, I did not see that coming again, then it's a much better experience for them overall. Weirdly enough, you need them to blame yourself themselves in order to have a good time. I'm just gonna punch through these fire crates a few more times. Get this jump checked out. It's feeling pretty good. But I don't want players to have to do all that all the time, so again, now I'm gonna throw a checkpoint in there. But I'm gonna make this one have a limited number of lives on it. You can't just come back to it infinitely. You have to really try to commit to what you're doing here. And again, that just adds a little bit of higher stakes to a scenario that otherwise maybe might get a little bit boring at some point. Working on this treadmill. Getting these guys moving forward. There are tons of switches that I can choose from to get this whole thing to work. So what I want to have happen is the player actually sees the treadmill working. Which, of course, after punching a bunch of things, maybe they're feeling a little too fast to be able to actually see it. So I'm going to make it turn on once they fall through that little pathway there using that proximity switch. Once I manage to, you know, climb back up the top of this level. Again, this is why playing level over and over again is actually really important as a designer. Because you got to know where the rough parts are so you can make it easier. Sometimes all it takes is deleting one brick to make a part of level flow way better. So keep your eye out for those easy wins. There's always a lot of them. Punching these block flesh and all the enemies actually drop something when they die. All the big ones anyways. Something that changes the game a little bit. But I never require the player to use them because they also disappear after a short period of time. So that can make plenty of situations where the player has to repeat a part of the level over and over again and has a bit of a hard time with it. I'm not super into that. I want them to be able to essentially use those drops as style points. Just for fun. Now I'm feeling those blob flesh actually aren't quite as challenging as I want. So I'm going to put some swoop dupes in there. And the swoop dupes zaning around on all those paths. The problem is swoop dupes can see through walls. And they also cut through walls, so I had to thicken up that wall to make sure that they couldn't accidentally jump through it and start stabbing the player in the face at the wrong point in time. Again, playing level, super important. And here again, they came up before I actually got down into this pit area. Not quite what I wanted. And instead of having that proximity switch, I'm going to put a battle switch up there, and that'll just count the total number of enemy deaths and won't turn on until it hits whatever the number is I give it. In this case, I just want it to be the case that the player has to beat four of them. There's already that Vac Rat that was killed earlier, so shouldn't be too hard to do. I had to lower the swoop doop pads a little bit to make sure they wouldn't come up after me. And now I can properly drop in there, get that fan set up, such that once I beat all those enemies, it'll actually all work. Play through the whole experience and see how, it's, see how it feels. There's always a tension between having the player get frustrated and having the player have a good time. In fact, with platformers and with a lot of action-oriented games, frustration is part of the fun. Because the larger the frustration, the bigger the feeling of achievement at the end of the day. You've got to make sure that you don't totally overdo it, such that players quit before they can get that achievement feeling. So in this case, I'm thinking this is about right. Seems tuned properly. And I'm moving back to finish out the rest of this level, which I just kind of ignored for the last while. And I have no idea what I'm going to do. It's just been kind of sitting there. This is something I'd recommend to anyone. If you ever get stuck on one part of a level, don't worry about it. Just go work on something else for a bit and 
And again, the level will tell you exactly what it wants. You just gotta start playing with it. In this case, I wanted to change up the pace. We've been fighting in tiny rooms all the time. I wanna make it feel really good to just sort of get out there and stretch those legs. And the swoop doops caused me problems because he's coming up out of the secrets there, but we're just gonna ignore him. I'm using the cheese mode to find out exactly where I want the player to jump from. And really what this is about is making the player feel like there's a change in the atmosphere, a change in, in the way they're supposed to be experiencing the level. So making them sprint and jump off a, uh, a large ledge and then do a charge multiple times in the air in order to reach a far gap. Very different from everything they've experienced so far. And having that change of pace, super fun. Makes a single level feel like multiple levels and makes it feel very rich, which is good. Get one of these barrels set up. Barrels are one of the best things you can use because it allows you to just move the player somewhere. Sometimes you just need to move them to a different part of the level and you don't have to bother making them climb, for example, or making them run through any particular set of enemies. You just want to move them. So it gives the players a sense of progress without having to do anything, which sometimes after making a large leap or fighting a large boss is really fun. And I'm getting this camera path set up here. I actually took that camera object and I'm putting it on a path and attaching it to a proximity switch. So what this will mean, once I get it working, is that when the player comes nearby, the camera will attach to that and then start moving away. And the player has to keep up or they will die. These are super fun because it allows you to put some panic moments in for the player, which, of course, I love making players panic. Turns out players love it too. I'm getting this battery switch put back in here. I'm giving some hints about kind of how this whole thing's going to work. Using those backdrop pieces again to just highlight areas of interest for the player or areas of calm and now I'm thinking through exactly how this panic stricken run that the player is going to go on with that camera is going to work but before I get there I want to make sure I play through the whole level yet again and feel it out and the reason is that you know level is a very complicated thing and it's felt moment to moment but it's also experienced holistically at the very end so a level that doesn't change backward, based on the movements that you've made forward, oftentimes it feels a little stale. What you want to do is, as you build a level, keep on replaying it, such that you find places where you can enrich the conversation that was happening earlier, based on new things that you've added later into the game. Levels are a, what's called a gestalt-based feeling, so they're experienced as a whole, and the sum is always greater than all of the parts. If you look at any one of these levels in Levelhead, they might have you know, 20,000 different elements in them. There's that many spaces that you can put down things, but they're experienced in a very holistic way. And sometimes, like I said, all it takes is just changing one block, and you realize that changes everything about how a level feels. So in this case, now I'm trying to get this thing tuned properly so that this is a panic-stricken moment that the player can achieve and can get through, and it's also super fun to work through. I want you to blast up out of that barrel, suddenly have to run, and the whole time sort of be screaming internally, but happily. It's all about making the player feel something at the end of the day. That's what people are here for. We'll carve out this area a tiny bit, and in times of panic, it's oftentimes good to reduce the visual complexity that the player has to deal with. So in this case, I'm kind of blocking out a little bit of that background. And we also turned the rain on in this level, so there are weather effects for every single biome which every so often is super nice and oftentimes signifies a more intense level experience because it actually reduces the total amount of visual noise coming from the background. Here now I'm trying to finally figure out how this level is going to loop back on itself. Again, enhancing that conversation between these later parts of the level and the early parts of the level. And I'm going to play through it and see kind of how this is going to go. Again, focusing on how it feels and trying to inhabit those two different bodies and just say, as a player, where am I at right now? Is it fun to die on that spike? Is it fun to fall off this ledge? Turns out it's not. Turns out I gotta wiggle that thing around. And what I'm, the problem I'm trying to solve here is that sometimes falling that far just doesn't seem that good. So I'm trying to figure out with the mouse there how the heck to do this thing make it so that this is the challenge the player has to face, but that it's not quite so frustrating. I think I managed it there. I'm gonna fight this swoop-a-doop to the death. 
use this bomb to jump up. And again, I'm just kind of ignoring parts of the level that I haven't actually figured out yet. I'm playing through it as if it is finished, instead of playing through it like a new player would, where they would actually probably do things that I don't want them to do yet. I'm coming through and testing out this camera anchor section to see, is this even possible? And sometimes you'll make stuff that's impossible. You know, as, as a designer, your eyes are oftentimes bigger than your stomach, and so you'll put down far too many hazards for someone to work through and make it not quite fun. So... A lot of really good design is actually just all about editing. You try something out, and you say, actually, that original idea was terrible. Let me backtrack a little bit. In this case, you can see that this flaming Bernie Whirler is kind of causing some problems, so I'm trying to figure out exactly what to do with it. Run through it a few times, just feel it out. Am I dying where I feel like the player should be dying? Is that fun? Turns out it's not. And again, that's fine. You build whatever you want. Move things around. Now I've got this experience where players are rushing to break through the bricks. Moving this camera anchor around to make sure that it works properly. And I think I'm going to make it a little bit harder now that that flamey thing's gone. And add a saw in there. Saws are much easier to jump over. So sometimes they can just look very scary. Which makes the player feel like they're having more fun. Sort of raises their heart rate up. Even if it's not actually more challenging at the end of the day. You sort of give them the illusion of beating a challenge, when in reality, you knew it wasn't very hard. But they feel like it is. At the end of the day, the feelings are what are more important. We're coming in here, and again, just sort of taking this thing in layers. I didn't worry about putting these backdrop tiles in until, well, until right now. Make sure the player knows where to do the jump. Kind of heighten some of the contrast in these areas, and really make it feel fun and fully integrated. And now I moved the end of that, the end of the level, all the way over there. And with that, we're going to give it a go. Let's see how this... that's that. So now I haven't actually named this level, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the level namer and see if I can find something fun. I like to start with a verb and then sometimes just randomly pick some new stuff and see where the inspiration takes me. Go, go, rumble. Feels appropriate. I'm going to tag these so that people can actually search for this level if I were to publish it into the regular game. And with that, we're all wrapped up. Thanks a bunch for coming by and building some happy levels with me today. And if you're something you want to see, feel free to drop a note below. Maybe I'll build something inspired by the community for this next one. Maybe there's a GIF you've got that you think would be fun to build a level about. Just drop it below and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.